Hello, Katie. Hello. Oh, good. <laughs> I just did a LinkedIn Live to celebrate my book's anniversary. So I just had like a quick, quick, quick lunch, and now I'm back. <laughs> okay, great, great. So welcome to our meeting. We are really happy to have you here. First of all, I'm Thiago, CEO of Foito, which is a company focused on online business course. I probably created this company 14 years ago when I was studying industrial engineering and I realized that I need to do more and more courses to achieve the, the greatest opportunities in my career. And then we start to develop and create content here in Brazil. Uh, these last seven years, we start to record our courses and deliver it by the online way. And uh, well, we are having a we are living in a great moment with a lot of people looking for our kind of courses. And we have that this uh, this uh, strategy. We have some meetings. The one of them is the Kipi Summit, which means Quality and Productivity mm -hmm. Summit. Is one of our uh, annual meeting, one of our biggest, bigger meeting that we have here in our in our company. Uh, this year, we're expecting to talk about leadership and we're ha very happy to have you here because when we start to look for leadership, uh, women talking about leadership and all these things, we found your name. And uh, well, I, I'm sure that will be a great opportunity to empower uh, and to share this knowledge with us. So thank you very much again. You're welcome. Thank you. And we opened the Instagram box of questions yesterday, looking for about some students' questions, students' doubts about your speech. So we separated three, three, two or three questions. And if you don't mind, I would like to do it in yeah. the end. Okay, Katie. So once again, thank you very much. I will uh, let you free and comfortable. Okay. <laughs> I'm for the show. Feel free. In the end, I come back. I come back to send you the the, the students' <coughs> questions. This okay. Right. Bye bye. See you. Bye. When you think about purpose and your company's purpose, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Is it the service or product that your organization delivers or creates? And when you think about your purpose as a leader, or as a team member in your organization. What is the purpose that comes to your mind? Is it about how you are contributing to delivering this product or service? This element of purpose is very important when we work in organizations, delivering and creating value for our customers and our role in creating that value is tremendously important. But what is more important is how we think about purpose, about developing people and harnessing and creating the care, their capability and confidence to create, to improve and contribute to achieving that purpose. My name is Katie Anderson and I have worked with leaders around the world, including having spent time living in Japan and learning with a longtime Toyota leader named Asao Yoshino. And what I have come to learn is that purpose as an organization and purpose as our leader in an organization is more than just creating our product and service. It's about developing people. I've recently had the two year anniversary of my book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn. In fact, on the day that I am recording this, it is the actual anniversary of the book. And one of the core messages that I learned from living in Japan and studying Toyota and working with 40-year Toyota leader is that one of the keys to their success as a company is the philosophy and motto that they make people while they make cars. It's about developing people's capabilities while they're actually developing and creating the value for their customers. And these two go hand in hand a focus on people and an attitude towards learning is the secret to success of large and small organizations when we can harness the creativity and the contributions and the greater human purpose of the people in our organizations we can achieve and create so much more as i mentioned i'm katie anderson 
I am an American who has lived around the world in countries including Japan, Australia, Spain, and the UK. And I have come to understand through working with organizations, studying policy and government, and working in human behavior, that the key to success for all of us is an attitude towards learning. And what I'm here today to talk to you about is how we can harness this attitude towards learning for ourselves so that we can become better leaders to create a culture of continuous improvement to inspire and equip the people that we work with each and every day to also become more competent and capable at solving problems, at bringing forward their creativity and creating and contributing each and every day. And this is what I call truly, how do we learn to lead so that we can lead to learn and create learning in what I call a chain of learning across our organizations. It's not learning in just one direction, but it's how we link together. A leader's purpose, as I've come to understand it, and as I explore from working with Mr. Asao Yoshino in the book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn, comes down to three simple roles. If we have an attitude towards learning and want to create greater value and outcomes in our organization through a focus on people, our purpose is threefold. First, to set the direction. Where do we need to go? Two, provide the support to our people in our organizations to do their best and to grow and learn. And three, develop yourself as a leader and as a learner as well. And if we can do all three of these, we can fulfill our leadership purpose of not just creating value for our customers through our organization, but by developing people with an attitude towards learning. And I call this the leading to learn framework. And it's so simple. What I wanna to talk to you today is a little bit about each of these and how you can be inspired to bring these concepts into your life and practice as well. There are complex tools and processes that can help us do these things, but if we get down to the basics, this is really how we amplify and accelerate our leadership impact. So the first is about setting direction. This is about providing a direction, a challenge, or a target to the people we work with. It is the responsibility of leaders in an organization at all levels to provide the clarity of where we need to go and that direction so that everyone in the organization can align their actions in a certain direction to achieve that outcome that we need for our customers. Having clarity of the target is very important and it's Important to emphasize too that this should be based on what is needed, not just what is achievable. This is something really invaluable that I learned from working with Mr. Yoshino in creating the book, Learning to Lead, Leading to Learn. Too often, in my experience, we, we limit the possibilities by only setting targets or challenges based on what we already think is possible. But when we have an attitude towards learning, about the plan, do, study, adjust cycle of knowing that it, what we, it's what we learn by not meeting the target the first time that allows us to grow and stretch and create something new. But then again, this requires us to have an attitude of learning, of knowing that it's what we learn from not meeting the targets that will help us get better and build and create. So, what are the things that we need to accomplish for our customers, for our organization, and for the people um, who are working each and every day? And then how do we use our creativity to go there? How do we achieve so much more and align our actions together? And this is one of the key responsibilities of leaders in an organization. The second part of a leader's purpose is tremendously important. It's about create, providing support and creating the conditions for learning and creating the conditions for people to be successful. And this requires what I call to balance a continuum of setting a high challenge, but providing enough support. Support can come in many ways. It's about asking questions from a place of curiosity and caring, questions that challenge people to think about a situation or a problem in a new light, that think about the possibilities in a new way, that come up with creative ideas without taking over 
the responsibility for the actual problem solving. So how do we do that? How do we show up as a leader who coaches others to develop and grow? It's also about creating the conditions where people feel safe to try something, where there is not a culture of blame. One of my most favorite stories and experiences that Asao Yoshino shared with me when creating our book was about his early time at Toyota. He was a recent university graduate, about 22 years old, and he had joined Toyota not to work on the front line, but to work in the back office to support the marketing and other processes at the organization. However, his orientation program was a multi-month program where he was assigned to go out and do work, to learn the value creation work, how to make cars of the organization, but also importantly, to learn the culture from a leadership side of, of this philosophy of we make people while we make cars. And he had a really um, memorable experience that brought this point home for him. He was working in the paint shop and his job, his one responsibility was to pour a can of solvent and a can of paint into a large vat. And this is in the late 1960s. So the large vat, they would mix up the paint and then as the cars came down the line, they would spray the paint on the cars. This went on for several weeks, mixing the paint and the solvent. And one day, one of his managers came running up to the paint shop and said, the paint wasn't sticking to the cars. Over 100 cars would have to be repainted. And all eyes went on young Mr. Yoshino. And he immediately thought, uh-oh, am I gonna get in trouble? And maybe the first experience or first reaction of his managers was one of frustration and upset, but they didn't act on that. Instead, they went over and they asked him, show us the process by which you poured the paint and the solvent into the vat. And so he did, he showed what he did, and it became very clear that the cans looked almost identical. And the amazing thing is, and he laughed when remembering the story after many decades, was that not only did they not blame him for this mistake, they said, thank you. His manager said, thank you for making this mistake because you've showed us that we didn't set up the conditions for you to be successful. What an amazing experience. And this gets back to creating a place that it's safe to make mistakes. Of course, we don't want mistakes and we want to mistake proof them. But instead of blaming, having this be seen as a space for learning and for improvement and the manager taking responsibility to move forward with that improvement so that didn't happen again. When we can both provide clarity of what should happen and the support to allow people to be successful and to grow and learn and support to learn new skills as they get more skilled and more advanced in their abilities. This is where we really thrive in developing people so that we can create more and better services and outcomes uh, that we need for our customers and for our organization. One of the important things here too is to remember that challenge without support will create an unfavorable condition where people are unhappy at work. They just feel like there are so many things to do and so many expectations, but they may not have the capability or confidence to fulfill what they're being asked to do. And similarly, support with no challenge or direction in which to orient their energy. People may feel happy or be doing a lot of activities, but they're not directed towards what really needs to happen. So we need both challenge and support working together to help people become their best and to move the organization forward to what's needed. One of the other very important things to remember here is that one of the biggest leadership challenges that we have, and I should say not just leadership challenges, human challenges, is that we have a habit. We have a habit of telling, and we need to break the telling habit to really become effective at growing and developing the skills and capabilities of others and to solve more problems. It's not that telling is wrong and that asking is right, they're both right under the right circumstance. But when we show up telling people, not just where they need to go, but exactly what to do and how to do it and suggest all of our ideas and telling people 
our suggestions. You know what happens? Not only do the people you're giving, you're telling what to do and how to do it, feel disengaged from the work, who ends up owning the problem? You do. So when we can get better at knowing that how to tell is about setting the direction, providing clarity of expectations and providing feedback to let people know how they're performing, but then giving the space and creating the conditions for learning through asking open-ended questions and helping develop that person's skills around problem solving and contributing. You are unburdened by having the responsibility of solving every single problem in the organization. And you also get to leverage the creativity of so many people in your organization as well. So the number one tip I have for you as you're looking to develop greater capability and skills in your organization to grow a culture of continuous improvement is to figure out how to break your telling habit, how to ask more open-ended questions, and how to not ask questions in disguise. When you can get away from telling all of your ideas and giving people the space to grow and to learn and to think and to contribute, you solve so many more problems. Then the third part of a leader's purpose is about developing yourself. And this goes back to this concept that the things that led to our earlier career success as independent contributors or as experts in our field of giving answers and coming up with solutions does no longer serve us when our responsibility is also to help grow and develop a team. We need to see ourselves as business conditions that require improvement as much as we see processes in our organization that require improvement. It's about how each of us show up as human beings to contribute to a purpose of learning, growing, and more, and to solve and achieve important problems uh, and outcomes that we need for our customers. I try not to share a lot of Japanese words in the work that I do, but one of the things that really uh, surprised me when I moved to Japan and was studying Japanese is how a word like Kaizen, which we translate to be continuous improvement, actually has much more rich uh, meaning in the original Japanese script. So the, the words on the left mean change, but these come from the symbols meaning self and whip. And then the word on the right, Zen, coming from sacrifice. But continuous improvement, or Kaizen, is much more than continuous improvement of processes, which is as important. But it's about continuous improvement, the self-discipline to improve ourselves for the betterment of the good. And so if we can start seeing, in as much that our purpose as an organization is not just to develop a great uh, service or pro uh, outcome for our customers, but it's also to develop people. Continuous improvement is also about having the attitude of developing ourselves so that we can help others develop and so that we can achieve the important challenges or outcomes that we need to for our organization. This gets back to one of my favorite words, intention, and how intention, as I've come to see it, and actually this comes from the original Japanese script um, coming from the words heart and direction. Heart being what's our purpose? Who do we wanna be and what impact do we wanna have? And then direction about what are the actions that actually align with fulfilling that purpose or the impact that we want. And when we can connect with what our deeper purpose is, perhaps not just um, solving the problem or having the outcome that we need, but also about how we, the impact that we have on other people, we're better able to see and connect what actions we need to take to truly fulfill our intentions and be that person. It's about aligning with purpose and going back to who do we really wanna be? How do we wanna improve ourselves? And how are we gonna help other people improve and grow to have an attitude of continuous improvement in learning in our organizations and in our, in our broader lives as well. In fact, all of the work that I've done as a leader in my professional life 
has made a tremendous impact in my personal life as well. I am a better parent, I'm a better spouse, and I'm a better friend. Because when we connect with purpose about the impact that we really want to have, about how we help other people grow and develop to achieve the outcomes they need to, and how we develop the habits that are most aligned with that, we, we improve, we grow, and have a more aligned and meaningful impact. So I encourage you to keep learning together and to discover the stories. Um, my, this book is being translated into Portuguese, which will be available later this year. Stories of learning to lead so that you can lead to learn. How we create a chain of learning, not just in one direction, that it's a leader um, teaching someone else to learn, but we learn through the interaction of helping other people grow and develop as well. When we ask questions from a place of curiosity and caring, we help others solve more problems and create greater capability and confidence for them to solve more problems and to help develop other people's capability. And this is how we connect all together. I also encourage you to break your telling habit. And I have some resources for you here. Uh, you can see the link below at my website, kbjanderson.com slash telling dash habit. There's so many things that we can do to go back to aligning with our leadership purpose so that we can align with purpose, connect our heart and our direction, and learn to lead and lead to learn by setting direction, providing support, and developing our own skills and capabilities to do all of the same. Thank you so much, and I welcome your questions as well. Please connect with me, and I'd love to create an ongoing chain of learning together. Thank you very much, Katie. Well, we separate two questions, two students' okay. questions, right? And at this night, we are proud and especially happy to say that uh, there is only women speakers. That's oh. really good, yeah, because we have a lot of engineering in our uh, contest, yeah, and uh, we love to empower and to the, uh, women voices hey. here. So, yeah, that's a special night for it. And Alicia Souza sent us a question. Uh, what are your tips for female leaders who want to reach higher position within organizations? Oh, uh, well, it's really exciting that you intentionally uh, brought on so many female speakers to, and, and to help help collaborate and empower and bring those women's voices uh, forward as well. Um, so great, great question, Alicia. And, you know, I've, it's some of my, some of my comments here would be, you know, for the same for men too, about how are you advocating for yourself and how are you moving, uh, moving forward. One of the things I've always recommended to people in my network, regardless I'm mentor when I was just in my career in mentoring university students or as I've grown up in my uh, leadership and my, in my business and my, success, my, my career success as well, is to develop genuine human relationships to stay connected with people. Like if you're in, in university right now, stay connected with a few, a few key professors. They may write recommendations for you for a job or for graduate school. Stay connected with a, a boss that really was helpful and meaningful for you and find those mentors and those advocates who are going to help you um, get opportunities or create opportunities for you and also Find a way to be clear about where do you want to go in, uh, in your career? What are some of your aspirations? And be transparent and share that with some people who might be in a space where they can help open doors for you or to give you some opportunities. We need to not, I feel like often um, this could be for anyone, but maybe more for women than, than for men, feel that not as comfortable about asking for help or asking or putting forward their ambitions uh, for themselves. And so if we can be transparent and ask in a kind and caring way, but this is you know, what I wanna learn or an opportunity I'd like to have, or this is where I'd like to grow in my career. When people know that, then they know how they can help us as well. And when we have those genuine human connections and stay connected and it's a two way street that you're happy to help someone as well, um, that can be that can be really beneficial. But if you're someone who wants to grow and continue to um, you know move up on the on your career ladder, find those advocates, find those connections, and also share um, your aspirations. And that's okay. It's okay to be uh, an ambitious woman with aspirations. So 
Ganbate, as they'd say in Japanese. Go for it. Ganbate. Yes. Go for it. All right. Do your best. Do it. But Do go your best. for it. You need to yeah. be more confident. All right. Yeah, People need to be more it's confident. Okay. It's, okay. it's definitely, it's okay. And it's good. So. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so the last one, Kyle Lima. What are the best tools to guide the journey of continuous improvement in order to minimize the impacts of constant, constant changes in the business? Oh, well, you know, I think one thing we've all learned, or there's, there are many things we've learned, but there's going to be constant change. So the, the only the only constant is change. And so how can we how can we manage that? Again, I think staying connected on that sense of target of where do we need to go? What do we need to accomplish? And so that we have alignment on that. And from a um, organizational perspective, you know, the longer term strategy shouldn't change, like where we need to go, maybe how we get there varies based on the different things that are emerging in the world. But then how can we orient our creative energy to stay there? And how do we, uh, again, stay, keep this learning mindset that there may be setbacks <laughs> and challenges, but how are we going to quickly learn from them and adjust? Um, I have these favorite, these dolls called Daruma dolls, and they represent this Japanese proverb, fall down seven times, get up eight. And they're like, they, they, they're they weighted at the bottom. See, it's always going to write itself up. And when you have a goal, like a big challenge that you want to overcome, you fill in the doll's left eye. And then when you can finally achieve it, you fill in the right one. But I think this is a really important um, philosophy to have is that we're going to get knocked down. We're going to have constant volatility and changes as well. But if we know where we're going and we can keep getting back up and say, OK, that didn't work or this was something we didn't expect. How are we going to learn quickly and adjust our plan and, and keep moving forward? And that's, you know, so I don't know if there are some there are obviously tools that can help you with that. But I think the most important thing is that mindset of learning and knowing that there are always going to be setbacks and challenges and unexpected, but it's how we can more quickly adjust and learn. And, and we, when we do that better as individuals, we can do it better as teams and as organizations as well. Well, thank you very much, Katie. We're very happy to have you here. I'm sure that you will empower and inspire a lot of students, women and men mm -hmm. who want to develop their skills and become great leaders. Uh, congrats again for your book, right? It's being translated in different languages. It's, it's a synonym that it's a successful book. It's really great. Uh, the team is, is amazing. That, you know, so, well, let's keep in touch with the social media. I'm here and uh, 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 open to, to any kind of partnership, any kind of needs that you want for Brazilian people. Uh, you can count on Boito with it, all right? So thank you very much again for all your kindness, all your, I can see in your eyes how happy you are to, to share this mission of development people, to share your knowledge. So we're here, here very happy to. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, and stay connected and reach out if you have any questions. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.